Hey guys, uh, welcome back to uh, another week of online Sunday school. Uh, I know it's a difficult transition for you guys, so um, I really do want to thank you guys every week to that that you guys are just jumping in and uh, following along with us. I know it's not easy, and um, I also know that um, it requires a lot more effort on each and every one of our parts. Uh, but this is what God was preparing us for. I I, I truly believe, and so. Um, I think this is just another way that we can just learn to grow uh, not only in the good times but also in the hard times and so uh, without further ado let me get into announcements and then we'll jump right into the lesson okay uh, so false creek is still up for air, up for grabs we'll figure out what exactly is going to happen uh, probably around Wednesday and I'll keep you guys updated uh, but the plan right now is to go at um, week six still in their new three-day program and we're going to be leaving on July 8th and coming back on the 11th. Uh, if you have any questions on that let me know but it's $80 a person and um, as always paperwork uh, I'll just need it in whenever you get done uh, ideally sooner the better uh, but I'll probably start uh, calling out for them once we are past the, um, the 18th and uh, we'll see what they want to do with that. Uh, Super Summer, if you haven't heard yet, uh, unfortunately the on-campus visit has been canceled, but they will still be doing the um, Super Sundays, they call it. So every Sunday uh, starting in June, um, well, for the month of June, is going to be, uh, is going to have a special worship time, service, and message, uh, and discussion time between us. And so if some Super Summer was something that you wanted to do, or, or if something, uh, or if leadership is something that is appealing to you, uh, that is always up for grabs. Um, we're going to be meeting together to do that uh, as soon as we figure out what this, um, what the next step on the COVID thing is, okay? Uh, summer schedule is still kind of tentative, so I don't want to release anything just yet because, um, like I said, everything might change and get moved around. Uh, but that is still in the works and we are going to still have some fun and have some cool activities and um, have some time of fellowship over the summer so uh, make sure that you stay tuned for that um, I think that's all I have for you guys so let's uh, let's get started on the lesson so today's lesson is going to be found in the book of Philippians and so in the book of Philippians um, Paul is writing to a specific church in Philippi um, but there's a, there's a point uh, in, in today's passage, and that's that as Christ followers, uh, knowing God should be one of the primary pursuits of our lives. And so it's not just enough to know about God, but we need to know um, who He is, why He does the things that He does, why He loves us so much, and, and what His plans are for us. And so Paul expresses this um, really strongly in the letter uh, that he writes to the Philippians. Um, and he says that nothing compares to knowing God. That's how valuable, that's how important it is for us to know God. And, and I think this is a really good time for us to re-examine our priorities and to just uh, recommit ourselves to the passionate pursuit of knowing God more. Paul loves the church in Philippi like this he, he loves them so much um, but they're very young in their faith and what I mean by that is that they're, that they're not you know they're not in their 20s or they're not teenagers uh, but rather they just haven't known the gospel they don't haven't known Jesus as long um, as some of the other churches and, and so he writes this letter um, to thank them for their kindness and prayers while he was in prison uh, but he's also encouraging them not to lose heart, not to lose their passion because of his persecution. And so having someone like Paul, someone that's a spiritual elder and mentor and someone that they looked up to being imprisoned must have come as a great shock to him. And so it would have been easy for them, especially being so young in their faith, uh, for them to lose heart, for them to get discouraged, um, to get uh, to get pessimistic, and to get frightened. And, and so Paul writes this letter because uh, he doesn't want that to happen. And so the scripture leading up to our passage today, um, 
Paul writes and warns them uh, about being prideful and not just prideful uh, in itself but also prideful in their own flesh um, and, and so Paul writes that if there's anyone that should be confident in, in what he has in the world then it should be Paul he has the pedigree he has the genetics he has the job he has the uh, the honor he has the money he has all of it um, and he, but he's saying that that's not what's important what's truly important um, is Christ and so uh, with all the things that he has in the world Paul still decides that the gospel that knowing God um, is so much more valuable than anything that he could have ever earned or, or gotten here in the on earth think about it real quick think about uh, what you spend a majority of your time doing in your everyday life and so it could be something as simple as school right um, or it could be a hobby whatever it may be think about something that you do a majority of the time and so with that activity what is what do you enjoy about uh, that particular activity or those activities and so if you had a completely free day would you spend more time doing the things that you love um, than you currently do and so the reason I asked you these things is because Paul was a man um, who had hobbies and he he had things that he was good at too in fact Paul was so amazing at what he did before he became a Christian um, Paul writes about some of these things that he he had uh, before he knew God and so let's look at our passage today in Philippians 3 uh, chapter 8 uh, sorry Philippians chapter 3 verse 8 um, and it goes a little bit like this indeed I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ my Lord for his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and so he writes that um, that all these things that he mentioned in the previous verses he counts them as a loss what does it mean to count something as loss um, to count something as loss means that you count it less valuable it, it's saying that you could have gotten something more valuable but if you had this it would be as if you lost out on something better and so Paul compares this loss to something that's so much better that he could have that he that he actually got he's saying that if he chose the world if he chose everything that he had before Jesus it would be a loss compared to Jesus and so Paul states that he suffered the loss of all things right? but he counts them as rubbish uh, so that he may gain Christ and so rubbish in, in this term is talking about garbage right it's trash it's worthless things and so um, Paul refers to the world as rubbish uh, because there's no value in anything on this earth besides uh, uh, without God right the greatest treasure of this world right are considered rubbish in comparison to God Paul was using some pretty extreme uh, language here to open the eyes of the church it's not it's not until we realize the value of the earthly things um, and deny them that we could be found in Christ so Paul is setting up basically the entire framework uh, of the mentality that we need of the mindset that we need when it comes to Jesus it's that Jesus is the greatest treasure that we could possibly have and then he goes on to verse 9 to explain what happens when we begin to understand that mindset so Philippians chapter 3 verse 9 goes like this and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law but that which comes through faith in Christ the righteousness from God that depends on faith and so the word righteous uh, it means without guilt without sin and so he describes two different types of righteousness here um, and, and he's talking about one from the law and, and one from the faith 
So there's a, a modern example that we can look at when it comes to the, the Jews in Paul's audience that tried to obtain righteousness through works, through, through the law. And that's what we call legalism. It's people who focus on the rules. It's people who focus on the laws that were written. Um, and they believe that by keeping these rules and these laws that they, be, they can be uh, considered a righteous person. While it is good to try and follow um, the written laws, to try to follow the rules that, that are set, um, there's something that's even more valuable than that, you see, because a person who seeks to be righteous uh, by following the rules can look like a good person on the outside, right? Like if a person does what they're supposed to do, uh, then they're going to look like they're a good person. Um, but they seek to define themselves. They, they want to call themselves um, by all the outwardly good things they do. And so what, what, end up, what ends up happening is they start thinking they're good because of the things that they do, right? And, and, it, and they think it makes them look awesome. But Paul points out um, that it's pointless to try to live this way because the true righteousness can only be obtained through faith in Christ. You see, because what ends up happening with that righteousness that's built on the law, that's built on works, that's built on rules, is that the moment that you break one, um, you are no longer righteous. And, and the thing is, at some point in our lives, we have at least broken one, if not hundreds and thousands more. And so... This is why we must value um, the righteousness through faith in Christ, right? Because the, the law, the righteousness of the law, the standards of the world are, are complete garbage compared to, to Christ, right? We live in a sinful world um, where every expectation and, and every standards uh, are tainted with sin, right? Like think about the world today to be a good person, uh, to, is to be openly accepting and uh, unconditionally uh, tolerant of you know other beliefs or sinful beliefs rather and so to acknowledge that something that's wrong is wrong is condemned in this world and, and that's an obvious sin right and so uh, to, to have that righteousness in faith um, we have to understand what faith in Christ means, right? And to have faith in Christ means that you first believe and then you follow Jesus. So there's the there's a two-step method there. So one's the initial step that that belief and then the the entire uh, rest of the step, the rest of your life is that second step uh, where you follow Jesus in obedience. And so now, how do we grow our faith in God has to be the next obvious question, right? And so, um, those are some of the easier ones that we can answer, right? These are the Sunday school answers that I, that I ask you guys sometimes, right? It, it's prayer, it's reading your Bible, it's going to church, talking about Jesus with others. That's how we grow our faith in God. And so... Paul wants to be identified uh, for being found in Christ. He wants his righteousness um, and his worth to be known for his identity in Christ. That means in which he obtains this identity is dependent on his faith in Christ. So without Christ, his entire identity, his, his faith, his righteousness, his worth is all meaningless. Right? So for us to grow in our faith, we have to spend time with Christ. And the more time we spend with Jesus, the more uh, we desire to be like him. And so let's see how Paul finishes out this message. Verse 10 goes like this, That I may know him and the power of his resurrection, and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. And so the Paul uh, and so Paul writes about um, three things uh, that would happen because of his faith, right? Um, it, it's talking about uh, to know Jesus and the power of his resurrection, right? 
that's the first part, and that we share in his sufferings and that we become like Jesus um, in his death, right? And so what does it mean when Paul is saying uh, that he wishes to know Jesus and the power of resurrection? Um, and it's because Paul understood that he was dead in his sin. Right? And, and by knowing Jesus, he is born again as a Christian. And so Paul experiences freedom from sin through Jesus. So that's the initial step for us. Right? Step two. Why do you think Paul wants to share in the sufferings of Jesus, right? Because that's, I feel like that's a universal thing. Like no one wants to suffer. No one wants to feel in a way that they're suffering. And, and I'm pretty sure at least 99.99999% of people can agree to that, right? And so well, it's because when Paul suffers for Christ, he knows that he's doing the right thing. Jesus suffered uh, for doing what was right in a world full of wrong. And it's because of that that when Paul suffered for Jesus, his identity is becoming more like Jesus. And so finally, uh, he writes that he wants to become like Jesus in his death, right? Becoming like him in his death is referring to his attitude. And so what was Jesus' attitude um, that he took to the cross that Paul wants to be like, right? And a simple answer is that Jesus knew that he had to live for God's glory, right? And so if Paul was going to suffer, he must embrace the comfort that is pursuing Christ and being like Christ. And so it's so much easier um, to, to know what we're suffering for uh, than just suffering arbitrarily, right? Because in this world, there is suffering. Whether you know Jesus or not, there's going to be suffering of some sort at some point in your life. But the good news is that in Christ Jesus, we have peace, we have comfort. Finally, Paul described everything um, that the world has to offer as rubbish because he had his eyes um, constantly focused on Jesus. And so whenever Paul's eyes came off of Jesus due to the world's temptations, he realized how minuscule they are in comparison to Jesus. And so it's not a bad thing to have hobbies, to have things, to have achievements. Um, the problem is when we spend more time chasing after those things instead of our relationship with Jesus. And our focus gets messed up. So Paul calls everything else rubbish because he spends most of his time pursuing Jesus. And so where or what do we spend our time in pursuit of? And so that is the only discussion question that I have for you. And I really do want you guys to reflect on it. So as you may know, we are hoping to start back up on the 31st. However, small groups and Sunday schools, uh, unfortunately, will have to remain like this for the time being. Um, I'll let you know more details as it comes out. Uh, but as it is right now, the starting on the 31st, the only thing that's going to come back to normal as well, I say normal loosely, um, close to normal is Sunday morning worship. And so um, if your parents are comfortable with it, if you're comfortable with it, that is something I really do want to encourage you guys to do. Uh, pray on it. Talk to your family uh, because I would love to see you guys at church again. Um, that's all I have for you guys today. And uh, just wanted to let you know that uh, I love you. And God bless.